U.S. Supreme Court Justice Amy Coney Barrett distributing the Calkins case to conference January 5th. And separately, the state of Illinois responding to the Naperville challenge in the U.S. Supreme Court. Both cases having updates today. Welcome in, Bishop on Air. A little brief update for you. We'll be back doing live programs, 735. We'll review a lot of what we're going to talk about here, but go even deeper. But I did want to get you guys this update here on this Wednesday afternoon into the evening hours. As Governor J.B. Pritzker was given a December 6th deadline to respond to the Naperville case, that response is now in hand. And when it comes to the Calkins case and the conflicts of interest, Justice Amy Coney Barrett forwarding that case to the full court conference to consider taking it up. So those are two of the uh, the updates here. Let's go ahead and get right on into it where you've got uh, the case from uh, Dan Calkins, which was in front of the Illinois Supreme Court. This all started uh, in Illinois with a state court challenge that Calkins brought forward. And that challenge was looking at uh, equal protections, saying that you can't carve out constitutional rights for police and retired police and security guards and not allow for regular citizens to have those same constitutional rights that was argued in Macon County. They got a final judgment. The states went past the appeals court. The state appeals court went right to the Illinois Supreme Court. And there you had Calkins's attorney file a recusal motion for two Illinois Supreme Court justices that got a million dollars each from Governor J.B. Pritzker. But it wasn't just Pritzker's donations. There were also sizable contributions to these justices' political campaigns from House Speaker Emanuel Chris Welch and a fund associated with Illinois Senate President Don Harmon. Those are main litigants, defendants in this challenge, giving money leaders of the two branches of government, the executive and the legislative branch, giving money to candidates for the judicial branch of the government. So the questions of conflict of interest are there and apparent. And that's what uh, Calkins' attorney, Jerry Stocks, was trying to get these two justices to recuse themselves. They denied that recusal, and in August, they ruled against Calkins. And now you have Calkins taking this case to the U.S. Supreme Court. So let's look at the docket here uh, where you've got uh, Justice Amy Coney Barrett uh, giving that, uh, that deadline for the states to reply by December 14th. But the states didn't. They instead waived their rights to a response. And in that document, it simply says that they do not intend to respond. And that was on Friday. And then we talked with Jerry Stocks, and uh, we'll re-air some of that tomorrow when we go live. But he talked about having even more evidence of not just the campaign contributions from Pritzker or from uh, Welch, but also Harmon and uh, the in-kind contribution and the, uh, the, the, the uh, aligning of uh, political ideologies with the justices and the uh, leaders of the other two branches of government. Uh, so in that case, uh, you've got uh, the supplemental brief that Stocks filed highlighting that uh, it was like $10 million worth of uh, contribution to these two Supreme Court justices and a whole host of other things that are alleged in there. Uh, Stock says that uh, this is a typical Illinois story and it's outrageous and stinks to high heaven. That's a quote. But as you see here uh, today, you had Justice Amy Coney Barrett distribute the case for conference and the conference is going to be January 5th of 2024. So uh, how this works, and again, I'm not a constitutional scholar, but uh, Amy Coney Barrett could have made a decision on her own to either you know intervene in the case, or she could go to conference and ask the other justices to review this, and then they could possibly go ahead and say, okay, and conference, they'll determine whether or not they're going to take this case. So interesting to see that. Uh, that's the case that Dan Calkins brought forward. But now let's take a look at the Naperville challenge, which uh, this this is actually one of the first challenges against the state's gun ban because it started as a challenge against Naperville's gun ban back last year in August of 2022. After the states enacted its gun ban on January 10th of this year, you had the Naperville plaintiffs, Robert Beavis with Law Weapons, amend their complaints to sue the state and Naperville. Northern District sided with the gun ban, and then the cases were consolidated with uh, cases out of the Southern District, which got a preliminary injunction. Uh, that is, of course, uh, you know, something that was put up, you know, a stay was put on, only lasted six days. But regardless, the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals consolidated the Southern and the Northern District cases, heard it, and then ruled against the plaintiffs, uh, siding with the state, saying that uh, they are vacating the Southern District preliminary injunction, 
and they are um, saying that the state had a likelihood of success on the merits. So that was a three judge panel. The three judge panel uh, is just part of the Seventh Circuit. And there is a pending request for an en banc review, but the pending request also included a motion for an emergency injunction pending review, either by an en banc panel or by the U.S. Supreme Court. That motion for a preliminary injunction from the Seventh Circuit was denied last month. Uh, but regardless, you've got uh, the plaintiffs that have put this in front of the U.S. Supreme Court, and that deadline for Governor J.B. Pritzker to respond was today, and that response is in. So let's go ahead and take a look at what uh, at least some of the overview is. Again, this is a brief video. We'll get out to a deeper dive and hear some of the voices in all of this uh, tomorrow. Uh, so I hope you join me for the live broadcast. But if you look at the table of contents for the state's filing in this case, they do a, you know, a good job of giving you that overview of what the arguments are, and you can actually find this again on the U.S. Supreme Court's website. Just search the docket for Illinois, and you'll be able to find the National Association for Gun Rights case against the state of Illinois. Uh, but the arguments they have here, you could just see the, the highlights, right? These are just the, the top-level highlights. You could drill down even deeper into this if you want. They say applicants have not shown that the court's likely to grant cert. They say that the applicants have not shown that they are indisputably entitled to relief. It's not indisputably clear that the act and ordinance regulate conduct protected by the Second Amendment, they argue. They also argue that it is not indisputably clear that the act and ordinance are inconsistent with the nation's history of regulating firearms. The state goes on to say that applicants' contrary arguments are not persuasive. And then they say no critical or exigent circumstances exist that would warrant an injunction pending further review. Uh, so there, uh, they, they again, uh, you know, highlight all of the background and the case and, and so on. Uh, but I would encourage you to go and, and read this for yourself. Uh, that way you can get a good detailed background of where we've come from, where we're at, and uh, where we're going. So clearly a lot of moving pieces. And this is just some of the pieces, right? We were anticipating the filing from the state today in the Naperville case. We weren't anticipating that Amy Coney Barrett would forward the Calkins case to conference January 5th. That's an interesting development. Could this mean there could possibly be a consolidation of these two cases in front of the U.S. Supreme Court? Or could the U.S. Supreme Court just say, no, we're not going to take these cases? Uh, or could they issue a preliminary injunction before the January 1st deadline? All things up in the air, and we'll be tracking it. If you want to stay up to date with what's going on with Illinois' gun ban litigation, be sure to like, subscribe, follow. It's not just that. We also cover stuff that happens at the Illinois State House, and there's plenty of action that's going to be coming our way. Uh, so you're going to want to be up to date with the latest, all right? I'm Greg Bishop. Thanks for hanging out. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. If you want to support the program, you could do so by checking out some of the uh, merchandise below, uh, different uh, types of ways you can get Bishop on air on a coffee mug, on a t shirt on a hoodie uh, even made up a, uh, a teddy bear that says uh, teddy bears are more regulated with a silly face those who know know all right have yourselves a, a wonderful rest of the day we'll see you back here tomorrow morning with bishop on air all right 7:35 central time be there